Hello, hello. So we had a technical mishap on um, trying it through Ellie's Instagram. So we're moving to mine. We're rolling with it. Oh, okay. Hey, Ellie. Ah, and it's good to see some of you have come over from Ellie's live that we tried. Thank you for coming to join us here, where we are going to be talking about relationship astrology. I'm going to invite Ellie in and we can get going on this one. <laughs> that was so stupid. Of course that would happen. We can't even... Right. Ellie, I've just invited you. Okay, cool. Does yeah! it work? It does! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I don't know what the fuck that was, but I was like, oh, I don't know. It would, it would happen with my shit. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I don't, yeah, don't know what was happening. It was just kicking me straight off, but here we are. Okay. We well, I it. guess I'll, I was going to introduce you. I feel kind of stupid doing that now that we're on yours. So. Well, do you still want to introduce the topic that we're going to be talking about in some more depth? I can do that. Um, we are, <laughs> sorry, it kind of like threw me all the way off. Um, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so we're going to be talking about love stuff, all kinds of love, love stuff, love stuff, <laughs> um, relationship stuff in, in the natal chart, um, perhaps what you might need in a relationship, um, how you might love and need to be loved, what kind of relationships work best for you, or, you know, what have you, um, things having to do with asteroids, you just started your your asteroid quest. So this seems yeah. very appropriate. Very um, appropriate. <laughs> um, and then the synastry stuff I think we're going to do tomorrow, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'll save that for part two. For part two. Okay. <laughs> All right. So um, why don't you start with what you like to look at in the natal chart when somebody's like, what kind of relationship do I need? Or what kind of person, you know, should I be? Be with which is kind of a loaded question as it, as it is yeah um, so much but, to dig into yeah it is <laughs> but what, which i love uh, <laughs> um so i'm pretty much going to always firstly look at the seventh house and the sign that is ruling the descendant and any planets that are conjunct the the descendant as well um so I would, I would describe seventh house relationships as like where you go to meet yourself. So these are the types of relationships where, you know, you, you know each other quite well, like on a one-to-one -one basis. And this, the people that exist in the seventh house kind of act as your mirror because mm -hmm. where your descendant sits, you know, that's that's the traits in you that you might not immediately identify with or recognize within yourself. Or and even so, get on your nerves. <laughs> yeah, like you flat out <laughs> deny that you even have, you know, that sort of shadowy side to yourself. And naturally, we seek that in other people because we want to feel complete and we want to feel whole. And so the seventh house, yeah, is really going to describe like what types of people do you choose to be around you on a quite an intimate um, level? And it doesn't have to be romantic. This is also like your close friendships, uh, business partnerships. Um, yeah, that kind of thing. Do you have anything to, to share about the seventh house? Um, no, I, I definitely look at it like you do. Like um, it's not just romantic relationships. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think sometimes, I mean, and, and rightfully so, it gets harped on and I, and I understand that. But it can be, it can be close friendships. It can be business partnerships. Yeah. I've even seen parent-child relationships here. Yeah. And in like not a incestuous, creepy, you know, weird way, but just, you know, the closest yeah. between a, a parent and a child. I also like to look at where the planetary ruler of the um, of the seventh house cusp falls. Um, yeah, that's so fun because that's where you start to see the con like the quality of these relationships. You can be yes. like, oh, OK, I see what's going on. <laughs> I see who you're choosing. <laughs> <laughs> and why. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so what? what's your descendant and where's your descendant ruler? 
Um, my descendant is Gemini. So I've got mm -hmm. Gemini on the cusp of the seventh house and Mercury is in Scorpio in the 11th. It's pretty, oh. close, to, it's pretty close to Pluto. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so do you, do you meet a lot of people online? <laughs> um, well, you know, I mean, I, I, I definitely do. Yeah. I would say a lot of my close, close relationships of all varieties do end up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anymore for sure. <laughs> um, Love it. But, um, yeah, yeah. And would you say, like, the, you know, so we're looking at the ruler of the seventh and it's there with Pluto. So it's, like, your relationships or the people you choose are these very scorpionic, <laughs> probing people who can, but who, you know, who are also very mercurial, like, will like to intellectualise and sort of like those subtle psychologies that are behind people's mannerisms and, and way of communicating, you know. Is that your, yes. your type of person? Um, yes, but what ends up happening, and this isn't, again, in all kinds of relationships, what ends up happening is, <laughs> is like, I feel like be, because my mind is kind of the way that it is, and I do feel like I, I end up with people that, like, wanting to talk about things that are like, mm. they don't really want my help, they just kind of want to bitch. Like trauma dumping, like yes, yeah. Yes. But they don't really want my help with it. They just want to <laughs> offload. Wow, yeah. So, and you must, because I, I really find with any, you know, Scorpio, Scorpio or um, Plutonic influence, there's this. You really attract energy vampires and people who like project all their shit onto you. You know, is that <laughs> has that been part of your experience? Yes. Yes it, yes. <laughs> yes it has I love how I'm just like fully psychoanalyzing you now like tell me everything about <laughs> your relationships <laughs> but they yeah they, they do they do usually have a pretty um there usually is a psychological flavor to them though and I and I probably mm -hmm. wouldn't like it if there wasn't something going on in but the yeah. trauma dumping can can get to be a you know a lot <laughs> yeah I bet yeah, so do, is it almost like, do people kind of tell you really deep, secretive stuff, like, off the bat of meeting you? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And that's fine. And that is fine. That is fine. But um, it, it really is. But I, I did actually have to... <laughs> it, again, these aren't people that were, like, wanting me to read for them, right? These are just mm -hmm. people, randos that would find me on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> okay and like you know and I'm oh like okay and I, and I finally had to create a service that's a pen pal oh, service right and you want you want a pen pal with <laughs> you want a trauma dump it's like an agony aunt thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah if you want to do all of this you're gonna pay me to do it I mean that's, me. that's how, yeah that's how, that's how maybe kind of harsh or kind of crude but it you know I had oh, to put a, you know, a boundary a boundary up and Big time. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Well, thank you for sharing that. That's what about interesting. you? So my um, seventh house is ruled by Aquarius. Yeah. And I have Saturn in Aries in the ninth, um, conjunct my south node. And then I have Uranus in Aquarius, conjunct my sun, like one degree away from the descendant. Um, the South Node thing is interesting. Do you feel like you come into contact with like close relationships of all varieties of people that you haven't known before? Yeah, um, yeah. Like I, I definitely meet a very big variety of people, um, and with that ninth house influence, I'm definitely drawn to people who have that yeah, and Saturn that sort of wisdom about them that sense of like you have lived many lifetimes um and you're you know very you get it like you're on the path you're on the journey um and I also find as well I meet a lot of people that I strongly believe have been with me in in past lives like I have yeah. a lot of very karmic connections with people or at least when I sense there's a karmic connection I will like I'm very attuned to that and I'll very quickly like sink in with that person and be like hey what 
you know, what do we have to teach each other in this lifetime? It's kind of how I approach a lot of my oh, relationships. Yeah. How do they, how do the ones that are, if you don't mind me asking, how are the ones that are, how do they go? The ones that are karmic for you? How do you find that they tend to? Um, all sorts of ways. So it, it's, <laughs> yeah, some of them are horrible and um, really painful and they don't end well, but there's still so many lessons in there. Um, but I, I definitely find the more, you know, I align myself with my soul's journey, the the better the quality of the people who are coming in. Um, but as always, we have those more difficult karmic lessons to to sort of go through. So yeah, now I sort of see the the meaning behind it. I don't mind it so much. That's good. <laughs> that is good because yeah, with that yeah, I would think that you would like this time there will there would be people that you would definitely they would come around again <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah and like the more you know because I'm really into re like digging into my past lives and mm -hmm. the the more I learn about the types of relationships I was choosing in my past lives and the wounds that I'm carrying you know as a result of that in this lifetime um the more I'm able to see these people like you're you're that person, like you're that disruptive energy that has been with me lifetime after lifetime and you kind of represent everything about what I'm trying to move past and heal from. And so I can be like, nope, big fat nope, like we're not doing this. <laughs> um, so yeah, that process is becoming a lot quicker uh, rather than having to go through the, the journey of like, oh, let's get to know each other and then being like, oh shit, you're, you're another... <laughs> pattern repeater you know yes um and then yeah i'd say with the with uranus you know the the modern ruler of my descendant being on the descendant um and just the fact that it's uranus and it's also conjunct <laughs> jupiter um i am so i am like a, a relationship anarchist i am to i totally don't subscribe to this is so fucking cliche aquarius i don't subscribe to anything that i've been taught about relationships um and i'm very very active in how i challenge my conditioning around relationship um and yeah this is kind of like i realize this is a process i've been going through my whole life but now I can start to like put words to it and when I was first I remember when I was first researching astrology and I was reading about you know oh Uranus on the descendant what does that mean and it was like you cheat you can't you know <laughs> hold down a relationship and all this and, and now I look at it like no I'm just not built for monogamy um, I'm just not built for the traditional model of relationships um, uh -huh. and there's more options out there available to me so that's you know one of the many reasons why astrology is so cool because you can find alternative ways of being that, that align much more with your experiences. And it's like, and you find, you kind of figure out this is, this might be why I am how I am, you know, it kind of. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I understand what you're talking about to it, to a little, I have Venus and Uranus conjunct one and like they are like up each other's ass like within a, <laughs> within a couple minutes so I do understand the yeah and on the galactic center yes <laughs> yes so I do understand to a at least a little bit what you're talking about with the non-traditional non-traditional maybe being a better some sort mm -hmm. of non-traditional being a, a better fit yeah yes. for sure um so yeah I think you know when you're looking at the seventh house it, it's I'd say you want to pay more attention to like the planet that's there if there is a planet there because that describes like the the characteristics of the people that you're in relationship with yeah. you know so if you have Saturn on the descendant you're going to be surrounded by stoic people perhaps a little bit reserved in their the giving of their emotional energy and um you know if you have Jupiter on the descendant you're probably attracting people with like strong beliefs that that want to give you a lot of guidance and teach you a lot of things and, and that kind of thing yeah 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 they can definitely yeah those can definitely show the qualities of yeah of what you're mm -hmm. bringing in <laughs> yeah I've seen it before as well with Mars on the descendant um 
that you know if you have mars on the, on the descendant you might repress your anger quite a lot and therefore you might find like the people around you are quite angry um mm-hmm. and you seem to have a lot of you know run-ins with with the people you're in relationship with again because there's that mirror element uh-huh. to it they're showing you what you need to embrace in yourself a little bit more yeah yeah <laughs> yeah and then you know once you do then the anger in your external environment will be will ease off a bit it's a very you know and what you, you do start, internally yeah you start attracting happening. that the high for, with the case of mars you'd start attracting the higher higher vibration of mars energy yeah. like the passion the the draw you know people that are passionate mm-hmm. people that are driven but not in like a scary <laughs> you know yeah overpowering way yeah 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 for sure um yeah that's, that's like everything I... so yeah really? after the seventh house i'm naturally drawn to move into the eighth house because <laughs> yeah. That's, you know, this is where the relationship gets juicy. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's where, you know, obviously it's the house of death and sex and intimacy and many other things. And this is where relationships get kind of solidified. And mm-hmm. the, the nature of a healthy relationship in my eyes or a long-term relationship is that it will go through many changes, many small deaths and rebirths and you know your relationships at least should be evolving with you hopefully and so (laughs) this is what we see in the eighth house of like okay you've you've known each other for a while and you're pretty close like one-to-one and so now you're moving into this territory of like merging in some kind of way maybe like sharing resources or having a child together um you know getting a mortgage together going like starting a contract with each other of your business partners that kind of thing so it's it's very much this like it's I call it the urge to merge it's like where (laughs) are you to become one um but I I especially love the eighth house element of this change like this constant changing that happens in relationships that's kind of eighth house territory to me it is the transformation I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, transformation is definitely a tough ter- Yeah. So those deep and soul merging relationships, they, they should, like you said, I mean, as we evolve individually, they should yeah. evolve too. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anything else? That's everything I wanted to cover on the eighth house. Do you have anything what else to say on, on the eighth? On the eighth house? Um, No, I think you got that pretty good. (laughs) Um, What about for like, um, for other types of relationships, like friendships, you'd look at the 11th house, I'm assuming. One of the places anyway. One of the places, yeah, that I, like, that wasn't on my list, but I, Hmm. the fifth house is on my list. So the fifth, 11th house actually. Totally, totally, yeah, um, that too. (laughs) Is definitely a big one. And I think, yeah talking about it as an axis like it's a very yeah like playful axis so it does kind of speak more to friendships um and perhaps you know you're not even that because the fifth house is where you're I see the fifth house is where you're looking to fulfill like just your your desire and your your urge to like flirt with people and sleep with Mm -hmm. people and um (laughs) have a fun time and indulge in pleasure feel and, and that kind of thing feel good yeah um i call it that i call it the doctor feel good house <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's just it's where you're looking to have fun um yeah. so yeah i definitely see the fifth house as like you could say it's like pre-seventh house stuff or let's say you're getting to know someone um the dating stage or the honeymoon phase um very romantic but then equally, yeah, it falls into friendships because it's like, where, where you just yeah. enjoy. Forget <laughs> your responsibilities and enjoy life. Yeah. Um, and then do you want to speak to the 11th house and how that? Um, the 11th house, that one deals with, you know, groups of people, friends. These aren't necessarily 
close, close friends. It could be, especially if you have the planetary deposit, dispos depositor, dispositor <laughs> in like the seventh house that could show like a, a tie into mm -hmm. very close relationships or, or even the eighth too, that, that could. Yeah. Um, but seventh or 11th house is like friends, groups, things like that. So you would, you, this is another place that I would think you'd want to look out for, for friendships, the sorts of mm -hmm. how, how you might, how you might be in friendships. And then, yeah, look at where the planetary ruler is to flush it out even further. <clears throat> yeah. And it's like that. It's more like a friendship group. I'd say it kind of could be, yeah. Describes. You know, like say my my older sister for example has quite a lot going on in the 11th and she has got this pretty substantial group of friends and they've been friends since school you know and they're like nearly 30 now um so it's it's very yeah like group orientated mm -hmm. in that way and I think that's why it re um, corresponds really nicely to the internet and the friends you make online because <laughs> uh -huh. that's more of a community vibe isn't it yes for sure. Yeah, more, more communal in nature. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then the other house you can look at as well for more friendship type stuff is the third house. Um, uh -huh. And I look at the third house as like those friends that you look at like siblings. Um, so they've kind of been with you for, you know, since childhood, um, like elementary friends, mm -hmm. you know. And these are the people that it is going to be like generally more, yeah, like platonic. It's going to be where the, that friends that you always ask for advice from and, um, you know, talk to when you, you need to just talk it out and, and this kind of energy. And then it's also like the people that you just meet like all the time when you're doing the round, doing the rounds around your sort of local neighborhood, um, mm -hmm. those sort of acquaintances that you come across quite regularly in your environment like the person that knows you when you check out at the store or things yeah, mm -hmm. kind of yeah things of that yeah. yeah yeah do you have any other things that you attribute to the third house um in, in terms of relationships like like that mm, no no not necessarily um not not unless again the planetary ruler of the third house fell some you know fell in some house that yeah like the seventh or the eighth or the fifth or the 11th or something yeah um, like that double signature sort of thing yeah mm -hmm. yeah what, what else do you look at for um for relationships in, in general in the chart beyond just the houses like um are there any other planets or points or <laughs> or anything um, that you yeah so naturally I'm going to look at Venus um yeah, Venus, again, describes, like, all quality, all types of relationships. Mm -hmm. Like, the fifth house is obviously very Venusian. Um, like, it's your friends and it's the people you're fucking. Um, <laughs> it, it's, it describes those sorts of things. And also, obviously, it's your, your values. And so it's really going to tell you more about the types of people that you associate yourself with. Because generally, uh, most of us are going to, choose people that kind of align with our values um and so yeah venus is is a good one to look at for that what about what about you with venus um oh i definitely look at venus to see what's <laughs> what's going on in terms of you know what what the person loves how they what they love the way they love mm -hmm. and then how would be by sign um but yeah what they need in in that love <laughs> area <Yeah. laughs> Uh, for sure. And with values. Yeah. Another one I like to look at for relationships. It's I like to look at the sun moon midpoint. Oh, I like that. Do you want to this talk more on that? A, yeah, this one, is, it's, it's, not, I don't know if, if it's looked at a whole, whole bunch, but it's a good one. It's like the, it's like the inner marriage of the sun and the moon. Yeah. So that the quality or the, whatever sign it falls in, um, can kind of give you an idea of energy that may be good for you to like you might need it it might be good for you because that inner marriage is happening in that sign yeah um same thing with the house that energy is good for you it's a really good one for for self-love too 
Yeah. Um, yeah. I can really that, much of them. Yeah. It, yeah. So I would definitely, everybody who's watching, try to calculate it. It's, I do think it's an important thing um, to, to know how to do. <laughs> yeah. Sure. yeah also I'm, I'm interested anyone listening where is your venus in your yeah. chart um so your is yours in sagittarius or is it in capricorn it's in sagittarius in sag okay so yeah in sag conjunct uranus um <laughs> yeah and we yeah we spoke about that in the last live didn't we about how you you definitely kind of have this different approach to, to how you sort of go into relationship yeah and how I even value myself and I, there's something else I forgot to mention about that and I think it does have to do with being conjunct the galactic center mm -hmm. sometimes it feels like there's a little antenna going, you know yeah. and I don't know it's there well I do know it's there but I don't like put it up but it tends to attract <laughs> a lot of um <laughs> strangeness <laughs> again I, th I think that's but sometimes that's a good but sometimes it's a good yeah. thing you know but um but yeah <laughs> yeah big time you know like, venus is is what you're attracting um <laughs> and that you know uranus energy to me is very <sighs> well it's just that very electric i attribute it more to like the psychic realm of um, energy whereas like the planets I associate more with like material things the traditional planets Uranus is getting into that like because it's above it's beyond it's yeah beyond. yeah yeah so you're you're I imagine you know you're attracting uh, uh, like weirdos <laughs> lovable weirdos you know who like have very fast intuitive sort of uh eccentric minds yeah, that's pretty apt. Like, the, yeah, the, 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 yeah, yeah, that's pretty apt. <laughs> uh -huh. Um, so Nancy has shared that she has Venus in Scorpio. Oh, I love Venus in Scorpio. Um, I was literally saying this on my stories earlier today about how fucking loyal the Venus in Scorpio is. Like the, the, the person that I've dated that I've hands down trusted the most in my life was a Venus in Scorpio. Like once you, once you're in, you're locked in, and I love that shit. I love just how fiercely they love. <laughs> yeah, they do. They do love very fiercely. They definitely do. Oh, oh, I see. Can you see the the comments? Yeah, somebody's saying um, Venus second house. Sorry, Venus second house Virgo. Lol, it's trining my Capricorn Jupiter though. So Ooh. let me see. Let me move this down a little bit. Ah, okay. So what do you think about that? Oh, shit. So first, I know, it's really hard to see. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the, I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> second house Venus Virgo. Um, oh, I really like that trying to Jupiter as well. So the second house is actually a really big relationship house to me. Um, it really describes the the unconscious material that's going into the way you show up in relationships. And so uh, Venus in Virgo is going to be, you know, you're, you're really going to be tuned into the potential of a relationship and how things can be sort of constantly shifted and adjusted um, in, so that things are working like effectively as a relationship should. You probably take relationships really seriously um you know kind of not here to mess around um because Probably you hold yourself to out. yeah you're like really willing to put in that work especially with a trying to a capricorn planet um really able to put in that work so yeah i really like that placement i think that's very supportive to, to healthy relationships yeah it is <laughs> venus and gemini Got a Venus in Gem. Um, I love Venus in Gemini. Do you, do you know a few Gemini Venuses? Me? Oh. Yeah. Well, I do know him. <laughs> and, <laughs> hi. <laughs> um, yeah, he is. Yours is um, yours is opposite the galactic center. 
which kind of Ooh. feels like it might, it could cause it to get shocked sometimes. Mm -hmm. But that's not really about necessarily Venus and Gemini. Venus and Gemini, Venus and Gemini is going to like, it's going to value variety. It's going to value flexibility. It's going to, you know, these things are going to be valued. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's pretty apt. Maybe. Yeah, and that kind of, <laughs> that space that they can get into with um, the more intellectual side of things, I'm like really down for talking about the relationship, which I personally mm -hmm. love. Um, I love Venus yeah. and Gemini. I think they're, yeah, just so good at, I love, like communication to me is the pillar to, the core oh, yeah. pillar to a successful relationship. So Venus oh, yeah, Gemini has that down. If you have somebody that's <laughs> that's not talking or doesn't speak the same language you do, mm -hmm. it's like, I'm, I just need to go now, you know? Cause yeah. I'm... <laughs> you know, go. yeah. Um, so Val has Leo Venus, beautiful, in the 11th house. Um, Ooh, also Lilith. Yeah, Val, is that your Venus is conjunct Lilith? Oh, it's Mars, I think. Oh. So is it Venus, Mars, and Lilith all conjunct? Because that's pretty <laughs> fucking cool. Yeah, it really um. is. That's, the case. that's some badass shit right there. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, Leo Venus. Just, oh, my Leo rising loves a Leo Venus. I love to be worshipped. And I love that <laughs> they can, you know, easily tap into that that adoring uh, space. There's no awkwardness there around words of affirmation and, and uh, you know, that external declaration of love, um, which is important to me. I also feel like with, with, with Venus and Leo, the person like the, and I guess this would depend on where Venus falls in the, in the you know, like it, there does seem like there would need to be a whole lot of self-value. Mm -hmm. A whole, whole lot um yeah a whole lot like a healthy amount not obviously not an excessive amount right because that can cause problems too but it does feel like um if self-worth wasn't as maybe high as it should be that could you know that could cause yeah. some issues in leo specifically just because leo is deals more with with ego and with with mm -hmm. identity, you know and yeah <laughs> And I feel like, you know, when it's falling in the 11th, this might be someone who kind of always shrugs off their own shit because they're so aware of everything that everyone else is going through. Um, Very possible, like, yeah. And their, their generosity comes through in that kind of walked way of like, it's selfish to care about myself and put myself first and value myself higher than, than other people in the community. Um, and so, yeah, it might be quite easy to slip into that kind of, yeah, shoving yourself to the side for the sake of other people. Yeah. Yeah, that does seem like that would be possible. For sure. Um, so also, if anyone has any questions they'd like to ask just in general about relationship astrology, then there is a little question box to the right of the, the comments bar. Um, so pop your question in there and we'll be able to see it and answer it. <laughs> um, so what, what about, um, what about self-love? Self -love? Wow. Naturally. So hmm, this is going to be a, a it's going to be the 12th, the first and the second house, right? It's going to be a, okay. a mixture of those. Um, you know, self-love in the 12th is giving yourself enough alone time to tend to your spirit so that you can show up authentically in the world. Um, and the the first house is going to be where you commit yourself to expressing yourself authentically um, and, you know, necessarily being selfish when you need to and putting yourself before others when you need to. Um, and then the second house is, yeah, going to be where your, your values lie and also the the second house speaks to the shit that you were shown before you could even talk you know it's like the very very early experiences in childhood that have led to you holding Shaping the beliefs you. that you do yeah and that 
of course shows up in your relationships and a lot of the time it's the unconscious stuff that kind of relationship between the second and the seventh you know it's that in conjunct um this is a very unconscious kind of like crisis state of of projection Mm -hmm. um you know so if you if your second house is telling you a story about you were taught that in childhood you watched your parents like struggle and never ask for help from anyone and they didn't really have friends then you're going to carry that belief into your relationships that you can't ask for help and that you have to suffer alone um and that's going to show up in in the seventh house so yeah the second house is like huge but if i'm digging into the like the roots of your relationship and attachment style i'll definitely look at the second Um, but yeah so that's where and and a lot of time that's where the self-love sort of healing journey exists that's where you can see potentials Mm -hmm. and ideas for like okay how can we detach from those beliefs that we were shown and and move into something that better serves us yeah oh yeah definitely Mm -hmm. um do you have anything to say on the second house on the second house specifically no Mm -hmm. i was gonna i was gonna ask you about some asteroids for Mm. things like how can we talk about some asteroids yeah uh for things that have to do with um self-love specifically oh okay I like that um like like what you would what would um what would be some that you like to look at or so I'd say Vesta is a very Mm self-loving asteroid in the sense that there is a lot of love and um sexual energy happening here but it it doesn't require another person um it's very much the yeah the relationship to self and the relationship you maintain between yourself and source be it like if you call it god goddess the universe whatever it's that you tending to yourself so that you can maintain a relationship with the divine um Mm -hmm. and uh, there is a lot of um material in there about sex as well and, and sacred sexuality mm-hmm. so yeah Vesta definitely a big self-love asteroid um do you have any reflections on Vesta? Vesta is kind of a Vesta isn't Vesta is in a strange place in my chart <laughs> um where is she what is she what's she doing <laughs> she's conjunct um Lilla like, okay <laughs> and she's in they're in they're both in the eighth so wow they're they're not quite I mean I know they're there <laughs> they're just not quite as conscious all of the time they're, mm-hmm. well they're I mean but they're there they're just a little yeah. further down um but I know that I should I know that I should work with Vesta to mm-hmm. bring her out a little more because I when I feel her I do feel her yeah yeah and I I was actually posting about this today about how Vesta is a state of mind she's not like (laughs) she's not uh (laughs) so funny but she is she's literally like an energy she is the flame um Mm -hmm. she's not whereas like Athena or Artemis have real personified energy to them well Um, yeah invested there's not even there's there's not even a a picture of her there's not yeah it is literally just a flame <laughs> so yeah she she is often depicted as a flame yeah. instead of like a, a yeah. personified goddess um and yeah and this just you know when you get into the kind of esoteric teachings about um love and erotica and sex it's it is talking about this vestal energy like this mm-hmm. flame that we always have burning within us and how it represents like the connection we hold to to source and how sex can act as a container to tap into that energy um so Vesta yeah speaks to all those things she's a really really cool one she sits she's conjunct my son um oh that's nice I like that yeah yeah she's and I she is like the the deity I I worship most regularly so I love a bit of Vesta (laughs) <laughs> um and you know if if someone has Vesta prominent in their chart they might not really be that interested in 
relationships with other people or at least not I, I'm definitely speaking from my own experience here but I can definitely see how Vesta feeds into my my approach in how I'm very happy just being in relationship to myself and then having people sort of come and go and flow in and out of my life um, that I associate with like romantically or sexually you know I don't I, and I don't want to get married, I don't want children, like, and Vesta is a, a virgin goddess, you know, devoted to her practice and her cause, as opposed to being a mother and, and a wife. So someone with a prominent Vesta could carry those sorts of traits as well. Yeah, they definitely could. Mm-hmm. Um, and I like that she does that, you know, that she she says, like, this relationships don't just have to look like a man and a woman settling down together, you know. Yeah, the, the, yeah, the relationships with her, whether it's with yourself, you know, just with yourself or even somehow other, other people being worth, some other person being worthy of, mm -hmm. <laughs> because it's like you had to actually be worthy to go into her, her temple, you know? Yeah. Um, it, it is more of a soul thing. Yeah. Uh, whatever it is, it is more of a soul thing. Um, yeah. Sure. Mm, love that. <laughs> um so i'm trying to think if there was any others for self-love what about series yeah series is a good one um do you want to talk on series a bit oh i i like yeah i like series um she's she's good for um she she deals with um how we how we nurture ourselves and how we nurture other people mm. um and can even show depending on what she's doing in your chart could show perhaps how you should have been nurtured, but weren't, um, yeah. which makes, which makes the self nurturing even more important if that happens to be the case. Um, oh yeah. That just resonates so hard. She, <laughs> she kind of, to me, she's like a, you know, you've got the moon and then you can go even deeper with Ceres um, to, to see the, the quality of how you are nurtured. Um, yes. And even, yeah, and, and, and I'll throw this out there for anybody that has, that does have children, um, a good thing to look at is where their series falls in the, mm. in their chart. Um, because that, you know, I mean, we may think, I mean, for people that do have kids, we, I've got a, I've got a four-year-old son, so I, I know how I nurture, but that may not be always how he needs me, you know, yeah. how he, how he needs me to do this. And this is about wanting to give him what's right for him you know so definitely look and see or even yeah. in other in other relationships too but I, I do think the one with the with the parent child is particularly important you know for this yeah. particular asteroid um oh, yeah. thank you for sharing that that like just gave me such a warm feeling in my body <laughs> that you know it's like conscious parenting like, oh yeah thank you Very, for doing I, that <laughs> oh yes I'm I'm really really big into into that specific yeah that's important um yeah and I, I love that you said you know Ceres is a good one to look at for the parent-child relationship because obviously her mythology is so yes. linked to parent-child yeah. dynamics um so yeah definitely an important one um I have Ceres at zero degrees Aquarius conjunct my Neptune and my Jupiter where's your Ceres conjunct my moon it's within a it's within a it's within a degree wow, of, <laughs> wow that's so cool <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen a moon series um conjunction actually it's kind of what's well, kind of strange because my moon's in Capricorn so I don't <laughs> I am not like the warm fuzzy kind yeah. of that's but I the way that I know it's I want to make sure that he, like my son, I want to make sure he's taken care of. I want to make sure he mm. knows that I am always going to be, you know, always going to be You're there. solid. Yeah. Yes. That, that I am. It's so yeah. important. But he, he has, I, it, it's in Leo. So it's a little, <laughs> he needs to be nurtured in, in diff, you know, so I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, we're going to need to, I'm going to need to Love nurture that. you the way that you need to be nurtured, show, you know, show you that. Yeah. And, and we'll get your Leo cape on. <laughs> like dishing yeah. out the compliments. <laughs> oh yeah oh I, and, and, and not the, I mean he he deserves him he's he's fabulous but you know it is it's yes he likes to be told yeah. how 
how wonderful he is. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like my series is Square, Mike Hiron, and Scorpio in the fourth house. So I, oh. um, and you know, series in Aquarius, it can speak to having this kind of irregular, erratic pattern of nurturing, and yes. therefore, in adulthood you kind of can switch between like I want to be close to too close back off um because it's coming from a place of fear and you know especially that square I have to like my my Chiron and my Chiron's conjunct my moon and Scorpio in the fourth like my relationship with my mother has been very like very transformative in my life and it's played such a significant role in my life for not the best reason um, I was gonna say if yeah the... <laughs> <laughs> um but has been you know such a motivational source of like as as it is with the square you know it's like I can't fucking deal with this feeling like I have to do something about it and um yeah so Sarah's definitely shows up in a big way in my chart um we have a question from nancy are there books you would recommend to discover the asteroid myth um do you have any do you have one right there yeah no, i do of course. yeah um, um this is a good one for this one just has it just has the the main the the most the big four you know, yeah the big four we'll call it now the big four uh vesta series palace and uh juno Mm -hmm. yeah um but i definitely recommend that um for yeah it, but if other ones i'm not really sure how many I've, a lot of the asteroid stuff that i've i've learned has has really just been online and researching the mythology specifically yeah. behind the name that is so that's so important i know you do that too <laughs> yeah big time um uh, yeah i i barely i've got chiron and the healing journey um and yeah, I, apart from that, I do a lot of my research online as well. And I also, um, I like mythology books because then if I'm trying to research an asteroid, I can just dip into to the mythology in a book. So if you, yeah, if you like learning through books, you're probably better off searching for mythology books because they're gonna, there's gonna be way more of them because the asteroids are obviously more obscure. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it was a cool question. Yeah, so um, yeah. And Val has said, oh, I also thought about Freya. Um, okay, so Freya is a, a love deity, and she's also mm -hmm. an asteroid you can plug in. She's a, a Norse. She's like the Norse equivalent of Aphrodite. Um, yes. She didn't surrender to any man but her husband in a way that she still maintained her essence, autonomy, individuality. I really like that. Um, yeah, I, I definitely associate Freya and, um, you know, Aphrodite, Venus, Inanna, Ishtar, all these kind of Venusian deities um, definitely attribute them to self-love um, before love with another. Like it's always, mm -hmm. you know, these goddesses, their mythologies are a lot, they, they do involve love, they are love goddesses, but it's not necessarily settling down with one man forever unless that man absolutely worships them. Um, <laughs> You know, it's not like the Juno story where she's constantly being fucked over. Um, it's very <laughs> much like, uh, I will only give you the blessing that is my attention and my body and my time if you you know how fucking valuable I am. Um, so yeah, I like that. I like that, um, that mention. Thank you, Val. Um, so speaking of, do you want to talk about Juno? I think she's a good yeah. little contrast for <laughs> what we've been talking about so far. What are your thoughts on Juno? Well, it really it depends on what she's doing in the in the chart. Um, mm -hmm. Because some okay, so she can she can show what you actually need in relation. She can show this mm -hmm. what you actually need in relationships by sign and house. She can show this, um, and I think oftentimes she does, even if we don't like like what she like mm -hmm. what she's showing us i think she does um but depending on what she's doing she can make that she can make relationships she she can be 
jealous of, but rightfully so, right? Her mythology, yeah. right, rightfully so. Like, so this one is one that really, depending on how, what the rest of the chart looks like, I would, or, like, yeah. I would think, okay, is this, is this really what you, is this really what you need? Or how do you go about getting what you need? You know what I mean? In relationships mm -hmm. with her, wherever it is. Yeah, for um, sure. And I think as well, like, perhaps, you know, Juno by sign and house does really describe what you need but in order to actually fucking accept that that is what you need and start seeking it you generally have to go through quite a lot of uh mishaps in in relationships it's mm -hmm. her her story isn't a particularly <laughs> happy no. one no, it's not. um <laughs> so yeah she's and I, you know i really associate her with like this seeking balance and she is desperately you know of course she is associated with rage and wrath and you know Juno was so for those that don't know Juno was the wife of Zeus um or Jupiter who had and lots of other ladies on lots side. of mistresses <laughs> just you know was off sleeping with everyone um or assaulting everyone um and Juno was like his wife and she stuck by him but she fucking took all her wrath and rage out on these pretty much like poor unsuspecting goddesses and women who didn't actually want anything to do with um Zeus but had no choice in the matter because he's a fucking immortal god um <laughs> and but and I so I really see her as like in her shadow she's this you know, we've all kind of known someone, a relationship like that, where the, the guy goes out and is constantly cheating on the girlfriend and the girlfriend blames everyone else but the boyfriend and, you know, hates all the, the girls that he flirts with and cheats on her with, but um, doesn't actually have the capacity to confront the problem itself, which is the boyfriend, him. him. <laughs> um, so there's a big, big theme of that in there. Um, and I think a lot of that comes with, you know maturity um and but I also yeah you know I like to twist this and think like what if Zeus had been a fucking self-aware individual and said oh actually do you know what maybe I'm non-monogamous maybe I don't want to just sleep with one person for the rest of my life how about that and she could have had a choice you know um so I definitely associate her as well with like um she could describe these sorts of situations where your your partner is keeping a lot of secrets from you and not giving you choice in your relationship and you're feeling very disempowered and which can lead into the wrath and rage um but at the the core of it is definitely the 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 desire for balance and equality and fairness in relationships mm -hmm. it's just how we go about mm -hmm. achieve how we go about achieving that yeah <laughs> Yeah, so definitely a, a more complex one. Um, <laughs> yeah. Do you have any other any other asteroids you wanna for for self love? I did write some down. I also took down the numbers. That's what yeah. I really wanted to write down were the damn numbers because <laughs> there's so many of them. Yeah. Um, now I also like I like the child asteroids. Mm, yeah. Um this one can kind of show how to, or I found that it tends to be something that you could work with to say, love on your inner child. Mm -hmm. um, now I know we're not really going to talk about, about synastry in this one, but I do want to point out with this particular asteroid, I have found that depending on in synastry, sometimes if this one can be a hit or a miss in synastry, because if mm -hmm. you've got somebody hitting this planet or not this planet, this asteroid, depending on what it is and what's going on with that planet, it can sometimes do more damage. Yeah. Um, since it is, it, it is, you know, but, but it is, but the child asteroid is a great place to look for, for self love on that, on your inner mm -hmm. child. Uh, yeah. I like that. That, that number is 4580. Cool. Do you know where yours is in your chart? Conjunct my descendant. Really? Wow. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, I, so I, I believe mine's late, late degrees, cancer. So that's opposite my Venus. 
Neptune conjunction in Capricorn. Ah, so there's, and what house was the, what house? Uh, in the 12th house. In the, oh, okay. So yeah. There's probably, it's, that would probably be pretty personal for you, but more, more unconscious. You probably would need a lot of time to like be by yourself and meditate and, and yeah. things of that nature to kind of bring it out to love on it, say. Definitely. Yeah. 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 Um, Let's see. Another one I like for for self love, um, and you could also use this in sinistry too. But I do like a more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just because the love there is so, um, it's like love without judgment. But you could also turn this to like to yourself too. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, I do like those. Um, and then loving is also nice. Just the loving loving asteroids is, is yeah there's so thing. many there's so many cute ones <laughs> isn't there I, oh thanks for watching nancy have a good evening um <laughs> so yeah i also i'm trying to think so i've got down here um sappho as well this isn't self-love this is getting more into the love between yourself and others um mm -hmm. so sappho is asteroid 80 and I love Sappho. Uh, she she's conjunct my descendant as well and my Uranus, um, and she describes like queer love. So she mm -hmm. is like she is a a real person in history, and she was um, lived on the Isle of Lesbos, which gives yeah. us the word lesbian, and <laughs> Sappho gives us the word sapphic. Um, yeah. So she's like a queer figure in our cultural history, and her her place in your chart can show um I find when Sappho is prominent people love to um gather in like groups of um feminine presenting people and she so yeah I find strong Sappho energy is like you like to gather groups of people to teach them especially more feminine um groups of people and then she's also associated with the expression of love through like art poetry and teaching um, song and teaching yeah ed education um yeah she's a, a really cool one and she Where's was very yours? like charming and romantic um so yeah mine is at five degrees aquarius conjunct uranus jupiter oh, okay eros descendant ah okay that's kind of cool <laughs> yeah that where does cool. she sit in your chart she's conjunct lilith and vesta Oh, uh, okay. Ah, see there, you've got this big, this big energy of, um, have you ever been to like, witch circles or like seances or, um, you know, um, gatherings of, of people? Um, you know, I haven't and I would like to do that, but it doesn't, mm -hmm. it doesn't seem like that really exists that much where yeah. I am. Not, not, not in this, not in like the... Or maybe I just haven't found it. I don't know. It could be that it does and I just yeah. haven't found it. But yeah, um, I would probably enjoy that. Yeah, I can imagine that being really <laughs> healing for you. Um, so I also have down Eros and Psyche. Um, so Eros is like the desire you have for the person you love and like how you just want to rip their clothes off and procreate with them. Um it's like <laughs> Eros is another one that kind of speaks to an energy as opposed to a person. Um, so Eros is literally that like fire in your in your gut when you're turned on by something. And it doesn't just have to be a person, you know, it can be like you can be turned on by like really good food or mm -hmm. like really good music. It's that fire in your yeah. belly like, whoa, this lights <laughs> me up. That's, mm -hmm. that's Eros. Um so yeah, that can really describe um, the things that turn you on. Um, so I have Eros it conjunct my descendant, exactly, conjunct my descendant. Um, so sex and uh, erotica and stuff like that is a really big part of my relationships. Um, yeah. And kind of has a lot to do with the quality of how I deem the how well the relationship is going. <laughs> <laughs> 
that's it. That is, that is important though, you know, that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, where does that all set in your chart? Where is that one in my chart? It's in, mm, it's in Sagittarius. I want to say it's close to the ascendant from the 12th house. I can have I wanna... a look. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Oh, it's conjunct your sun. It's six oh, okay. degrees I'm... Sag. <laughs> Okay. I knew it was somewhere in Sagittarius. I thought it was closer to the Ascendant, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> conjunct your sun. Um, so, yeah, and then Psyche is obviously very linked in with Eros. Their mythology is very involved. Um, and I see Psyche as where love transforms you um, and and how it transforms you, like how the tests and trials and tribulations you go through in love. Um, kind of a tribute to this yeah, feeling of she, ascension. Yeah, because she went through a lot. Yeah, with <laughs> she did with with him. Um, yeah, yeah. So if you have prominent psyche, like let's say around your seventh house, you might really uh, be involved in these kinds of relationships where it's like I would go to hell and back for you, um, like t like very soulmate connection type thing. Yeah. Where where is um, where is she and yours? She is in I believe she's in Virgo in my third house. Um, let's have a look. Did I right, yeah. Give me a sec. <laughs> she is in, yeah. She's at sixteen degrees Virgo in my third house. Um yeah, she's not doing anything too huge in my chart, but I definitely, Virgo energy is definitely something I tap into more and more as I get older, um, and so I can, the older I get and the more aware I get, the, the more I can see, like, how my relationships take on that form. Um, so, yeah, she's definitely a really interesting one, and we'll definitely talk about her more tomorrow when we do the asteroid pairings in Sinistry. Okay. Do that. Um, do you have any other asteroids you want to cover? Um I Okay, um another one, Spirit. Okay. I don't you I don't look at that myself, but what what's your observations? It's um well it's 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 a it's kind of it's not like Vesta, but it is a place where you can like perhaps tap into mm -hmm. spirit. But I but I when I when I say spirit here, I do feel like it's more of like a high like your higher self kind of thing tapping into yeah. that. Um, which you know, the more that you tap into that, the more that you utilize that and learn about that, the the more that you can love yourself and then love other people. So it does feel mm -hmm. like it does it can tie in here. Um, the number for this one is 37,452. It's a long, <laughs> longer number. But, yeah, some um, of them are super long. But, uh, yeah. but, um, but that was another one that I had written down that we didn't talk about. But otherwise, I think those are the main ones that I that I've written down. Yeah. yeah, like, obviously, there's so many. You can just scroll through astro.com and... <laughs> you can kind of like see from the name some of them are just very obviously about love um like there's a cupid asteroid mm -hmm. um and then you know if you want to find more just research uh love deities love goddesses and love gods and generally they're, they're going to be somewhere in the asteroid list another thing you can do with like uh, and it doesn't well you can do this in in relationships too but um like things that you love Sometimes you, yeah. there might be like asteroids for specific things and yeah, it might happen to hit something personal in your chart and it's like, oh, well, this might be, you know, why I, why I love this so much or because I mean, yeah. there's like, there, there are a shit ton of, of them, of the asteroids. So, but yeah, they are a fun thing to, to play with. Yeah. It's so cool when that happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. <laughs> cool. Yeah. That's all the asteroids I wanted to cover as well. So is okay. there anything else you wanna you wanna dig into today? I guess I should ask if anybody is once tomorrow we will tomorrow we will be filming 
and it won't be live, so there won't be any problems. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll be we'll be filming for um to post something, to post a video to the uh, Let's Fuck with Astrology YouTube channel. I'll be posting that on Thursday, mm -hmm. Thursday around noon. Um, is there anything that we didn't cover today that you all would like to see covered? So tomorrow we'll be talking about like more about synastry and asteroid pairings and, and things like that. But if there's anything that you would like us to mention that maybe we didn't get to today, let us know. We can, mm -hmm. you know, or you can do it now while we're still on, whatever. Um, but yeah, I wanted to toss that out there. Yeah, definitely. Um, I might do a question sticker yeah. thing on my stories as well. See if anyone has any specifics they want us to get into. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm all get into whatever <laughs> but yeah no i'm looking i'm looking forward to digging into some sinistry it'll be good yeah well then awesome. i then i guess we are what time is it oh yeah i gotta get my son up okay <laughs> 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 but um oh. but i guess um i will be seeing you tomorrow yeah and Same time tomorrow. you all enjoyed and thank you for bearing with me with my fucking technical difficulties. <laughs> um, we got there in the end. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Thanks, Ellie, for another great chat. It's been very fun. Looking forward yeah. to tomorrow. Yeah, me too. All, All right. right. Thanks, everyone. Bye. <laughs>